Well, I am so, so happy to have Julian here with us. And um, Julian is just such a special person that I have no way of introducing you properly, Julian. But uh, the word delightful just sort of suits Julian. And uh, this subject is also a subject that's delightful. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've always had trouble focusing uh, by myself. And I use my journal as a, as a way of focusing. When I write, uh, then that implicit, uh, what wants to be said just, just comes. And being invited to write is an experience of, of a very particular kind of accompaniment the very particular kind of being with your larger self and, um, and being invited is being in community with that larger self. So I'm really looking forward to the experience this morning with Julian. And I, I, I want to put the name of his book in the chat. We should praise, is that, that right? I you should praise. I should praise. I, I'm always changing eyes to wheeze, but you I made think, it a community yeah. experience, Lynn. Yes, but the eye is such an important part of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Julian. Oh, thank you so much. Um, uh, and I want to thank um, Lynn and Christine and Melinda for having me here. And uh, I feel honored to be here. Um, we're gonna talk about life story and focusing, um, both of which are artistic processes. Focusing is very much an artistic process, moving us towards what is surprising and revelatory and, and intimate. And in this workshop, I wanna explore with you how life stories, which are really freshly correct, uh, recollected histories of one's life, and focusing, which is a way of freshly revealing oneself to oneself, can work synergistically. Both writing and focusing are both, as I said, creative processes, which can move us toward greater awareness, self-appreciation, compassion, and gratitude. So I want to um, find some evocative ways to tell our stories to nourish and animate our writing through focusing, to transform our stories into a felt sense of a lived experience. Aeneas Nin said, we write to taste life twice, in the moment mm -hmm. and in retrospect. I've been a writer for about 50 years, fiction, nonfiction, investment newsletter, news analysis, and for the past 10 years, poetry, which has become my passion. But I only became interested in life story writing uh, about 10 years ago. And there was an event that precipitated that uh, interest. Uh, 10 year, about 10 years ago, I received a letter from an old girlfriend whom I had known in college. The letter said, you don't know this, but we had a child together 40 years ago and I gave him up for adoption. 36 years later, he and I reconnected and now he wants to connect with you. So this newly discovered biological son and I started an email communication with each other before we were to meet that lasted about a year or a year and a half. Um, it was an extraordinary correspondence. We wrote down our life stories and shared them. And the goal I gave myself was to write what, who I was. How do you explain who you are to someone who's never seen you and doesn't know you? To write without any romanticization or glorification who I was, what my experience of my life was. Um, we wrote a new installment about every week. Uh, and there are uncanny similarities between us. Um, we both had been picked on as children. We, um, we both lived athletic lives. We both loved being out in nature. Uh, we both had um, medial patellar knee surgery on the same knee. <laughs> 
as I would tell them part of my life without any spin or elaboration, stories started appearing to me and experiences starting appearing to me that I hadn't remembered before. Um, the one that was most palpable that I remember now is I spent five years in England as a child. I, and I suddenly remembered this character straight out of a Dickens novel who was one of my teachers. His name was Mr. Tapper. He would say things like, boy, boy, fetch me my cane. And you'd fetch him a cane, he'd cane you. And then you'd say, thank you, sir. And take the cane and put it back in the cupboard. And he was this very roly poly guy who always wore uh, a full suit with a, a, a uh, tie, jacket and tie, and smelled a little bit like vinegar and must. He was not very um, big in this uh, self-cleanliness department. Uh, <laughs> but this image came to me of him, and I realized uh, my whole life was full of these stories. And when I revisited them, they became alive in a different way. Um, and in a way that started to, I started to feel validated me and, and my new son. Uh, and we've become very close friends. Uh, this was about uh, 10 years ago when we first met, which was terrifying by the way. Um, but it was also astounding and amazing. Um, so, um, there's another saying, uh, an old African saying, that is when an old person dies, a whole library is burned. When an old person dies, a whole library is burned. My conversations with Rick, my son, uh, allowed the books in my library to start flying off the shelves and allowed me to have access to them. Um, So what we're going to do is have a little mini experience because there's not a lot of time here in uh, in in writing in that fashion. Um, we're going to get a chance to live our lives twice, which is not what you often get, and to in a way sanctify that experience to understand deeply. What a wonderful repository of experiences you have and how important it is to validate and sanctify them and see yourself in a totally fresh way. Uh, this writing is not about what you usually consider to be writing. It's, there's no judgment to it. It's taking a felt sense experience and letting the words fall on the page. Just as you do when you're uh, focusing, you don't gauge or judge what the experience is. It just is there, it's you, it's who you are. It's, you're taking a book out of your library and you're revisiting it. Um, so I'd like to say one or two things about writing and feeling blocked about writing. If you feel blocked, and that is a very common occurrence with people because you think this is a really important thing that you're doing and there's an imaginary person who's judging you and, uh, and saying this just isn't good enough. Sit with that feeling for a while. It might help to say to yourself, Something in me has this response to this prompt. I'll wait to see what happens. I'll wait to see what it is. Or you might say, I'm really curious about what comes next. Can I write about what I'm sensing right now? And again, this is not writing as performance. This is writing as just as you do in focusing, sensing into yourself. There's a safe place inside you, which is part of who you are. And that's what I hope you're going to. It's like, as I said, taking a book out of your own library and rereading it. Those pages are already there. You're just the scribe revisiting a place that you've already been. 
Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a quick attunement. And then if there are any questions, we'll talk for a little bit and then we'll do the writing part, which will start at nine. I know some of you need to leave at nine. I'm so sorry to see you go, uh, but we'll just have to mush on without you. Uh, so if you can sit in a comfortable position, feet on the ground, back supported, Allow your eyes to close or just look down at the ground. Bring your attention very gently to your breathing without changing it or judging it. There's your breath, an inhale and an exhale, an inhale and an exhale. The same pattern repeating itself over and over again. You might notice that your breath, breath is becoming more even and regular, like a wave sliding up on the shore and sliding back down again. And now I invite you to bring your attention into your body, your chest, your stomach, your belly, your throat, and the whole sense of body and ask, how am I today? And just wait and see what comes up. And be friendly to whatever you find there. Even if you're a little bit anxious or excited or still thinking about something else. Bring yourself back very gently to the present moment and ask, how am I today? And see if there's a word or phrase or image that captures how you are right now in this present moment. And now you might bring your attention to the process of writing and see if you can make a big space for the whole of it, for all your feelings about writing and your writing, your passion, your worries, your excitement, your curiosity about what will unfold today. And now before we come back, notice if you feel a little more present to yourself. And in true Jean Genlet style, you might greet yourself, this self that you just introduced yourself to. Greet yourself by saying, hello, hello. And welcome yourself just as you are with a sense of acceptance and friendliness and curiosity. and a feeling of loving kindness towards whomever it is you find there. And then very slowly and gently, bring yourself back to the present Zoom moment. Let your eyes open when you're ready. So as I understand it, the protocol is we have a little bit of a discussion before we've even started. Um, about anything that's come up for you, questions about writing, thoughts, jokes or riddles. Mm. You didn't do jokes and riddles, Lynn? Oh, sure, sure. And it's a time when we welcome uh, anyone to say anything that's there for them. Um, after, I mean, there's so much there for me after what you've said. And be sure to unmute yourself <clears throat> if you want to speak. Okay, um, thank you. This is June. What came up? is of course the critic is always there. Um, but it was interesting because in this um, going inside, it felt automatic. Like it almost didn't even feel real. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're always there. You know, cause I was saying, I love to write and I'm looking forward to it. 
and then there's, but this part is there. Um, but it felt almost automatic. And when I kindly, gently, playfully asked, can you just step aside for now? They agreed. Wow. Agreed. <laughs> When I come up with my critic, I turn to it and say, uh, you just want me to be loved. That's why you're there. <laughs> okay. I understand that. And uh, we're both engaged in the same enterprise now. Could you please step aside? Okay, great. Thank you. But everyone has to deal with their critic, you know, in the way that is best for them to metabolize that critical voice. Other thoughts or feelings about writing? Thank you for your invitation. This is Brigitte. Uh, I have so many thoughts in my head. I am wondering what will be first to be spilled on the paper. <laughs> and I'm really curious and I love that. I really love that to be surprised by my own life. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said that to be surprised by your own life. Uh, I am going to give you a prompt for the writing so that you're not totally floating in uh, in, in in limbo. But uh, yeah, what's your what better purpose than to be surprised by your life and your history mm. and curious about it, even when you visit it a second time? Other thoughts or responses? Yeah, for me, uh, writing is about loving myself. So I'm not thinking about the critic. Great, uh, Aliana. This is Sophie. Hi, Julian. Nice to see you here. Hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, Sophie. Hi. So thank you for coming to to do this. I'm really looking forward, and it's reminding me that um, this kind of writing is um, is really what brings life to my words and sometimes I forget when I'm thinking of something I want to talk about or present that you know I go to another way of um, thinking and writing that I can't connect in the same way so you, it reminded me oh I need to go to the creative writing or to my images this is this is where I speak my truth so looking forward to it thank you oh great yeah there's writing as performance and there's writing as um sensing into yourself and validating what it is that you find there this is not performance writing uh, i'll talk about that in a second other uh i just have uh, one thought uh, thank you for this workshop it's, it sounds lovely uh, I, I'm aware that I want to write certain things, but I also don't want to reveal certain things. <laughs> and I'm also aware that unless you reveal, you know, the truth of a, your situation, it doesn't really have much meaning or impact. So it feels like a dilemma. I don't know if you can address that thought. Um, I had that same dilemma when I wrote my, this book of poetry and it hadn't been published yet. And I realized I'd revealed a lot about myself in these poems. And I thought, this is the sweet spot. I'm a published poet, but no one's read it yet. So I haven't made myself vulnerable. <laughs> and it, it, um, but, you know, the whole purpose of one of the purposes of writing is to share who you are and to have that resonate with other people so that you become a, a common experience rather than just your own solipsistic experience. But it's something everyone goes through every time they write. And I, I wanna say when you do this writing, when we go into uh, triads, into breakout rooms, 
If you don't want to reveal what you've written, you can just talk about what it felt like to write what you, what you wrote and what it revealed to you. There's no obligation to have to make everything public. Julian, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I have something. Um, it's actually a curiosity. When I saw this, um, that you were speaking, I thought, wow, that's <laughs> um, the, the title of the workshop is called Writing Stories from Our Lives. And my question is that when I think about or have uh, embarked on doing any writing from my life, I would when I'm complicated, <laughs> what gets confusing, which is not confusing in the spoken sharing, is all the different parts that show up. Because there might be a, like, for example, a shy part or an angry part or a scared part or, so there, there is a, there's a lot. And I just wondered if you might be able to say something about managing, organizing or, um, is the, the written word is so different than the spoken media. Uh, yes, it is. Although um, this kind of free writing is some intermediary between spoken and written. I, but of all those parts, um, what I'd like you to write about is what you're sensing in the present moment and, and not analyze it in terms of parts. Uh, but, but what's most true for you in this moment? Just like if you're, if you're felt sensing into something, you're not analyzing it. You're saying, this is what's here right now for me. <laughs> when I'm felt, when I am, which I'm, I'm doing most of the time, is there, there will be a sense of one place. And then very quickly, there'll be a sense of another and another and another. There's a, the, the inner reality has this, a complexity too. I don't mean to be difficult, but it. Uh, no, and I think you should see what come, fall, what words fall on the page. Okay. This is, uh, uh, you know, creativity is part partially a thinking process, but it's also a whole other process. It's a process of relating to what's inside you and turning it into words. And that's what I'd like you to experiment in doing. It's kind of magical. And if you trust it, something will come out. Um, what you said, Julian, about the, the words falling on the page. Um, there's something beautiful about the, just letting the words fall on the page. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I noticed you said that I just wanted to comment on was that writing sanctifies your life. And I wondered if you could say a little more about that, because you're using the word sanctify in a different kind of way than I've thought of it. It was one of those sort of fire engine words. And I thought, oh, what is that? It sounds like something inviting and mysterious that I haven't thought about yet. Well, you know, and I was wondering about whether I should use that word or not, although I really believe that this process is uh, a way that you sanctify your life. Uh, Muriel Rukeyser, the poet said, uh, the universe is not made up of atoms, it's made up of stories. Mm. And, um, and the way you can sanctify your life, which is make it mean more meaningful, more real, more holy, more worthwhile, is to, uh, is to rediscover it over and over again. Mm -hmm. This is one way to do that. I think focusing is another way to do that, to make, to turn up the amplitude on how well you can feel where you are in the moment mm -hmm. and what the library is you carry with you which is only your library. No one else knows about it, mm. um, but it's you. It's who you are. It's the story you tell yourself about yourself. Mm. Uh, so by sanctified, I meant may revealing it to yourself and cherishing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that come close to answering that? Absolutely. I, I love you 
talking about it, making it more meaningful, uh, making it more um, beautiful. Yeah, it comes to me. Well, you're not even making it beautiful. The beauty is there. You just have to, you know, who was it? Leonardo who said, uh, I don't carve statues. I just release them from the marble. <laughs> Michelangelo. Michelangelo, that's right. Right. May, may I add something about uh, sanctifying? For me, there is uh, a respect. And uh, it takes me to um, going away from liking or not liking uh, mm -hmm. a thought. So mm -hmm. going into the non-duality, this mm -hmm. is what comes. The energy of life gives me that. The words are come falling on the page and mm -hmm. I have absolutely no power on them in some way. I have to respect them. I cannot censor mm -hmm. because I don't know what's behind these words. Right. They are pages right. and pages and mm -hmm. chapters that are not mine. So for me, it helps um, quieting down the critique in some ways. The critique wants to protect me, but the critique doesn't know what's beautiful. So it's a dance. Yeah. Right. right. I, yes. I hate binary systems. I hate, is it good or is it bad? Do I like it or do I not like it? There's a whole other reality that has nothing to do with analyzing things in terms of uh, binary systems. What's the experience right now? Right. The, there doesn't need to be a judgment about it. That's what's happening right now. That's what mm -hmm. the, the reality is that you're that you're in. So if you can't cherish it, you can't cherish your life. So this is another way to practice cher uh, sanctifying it or cherishing it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I want to talk quickly about uh, free writing. Um, which is one thing that the, one way that this writing is is described. It's a form of a, it's kind of stream of consciousness writing. The idea is you write down whatever comes to you, without judgment or thinking or planning. Um, whatever is in your felt sense in the moment is what you allow to fall onto the page. And one of the tricks to free writing is keep your pen on the paper and, and try to keep it moving. If you can't think of anything, let the pen think of something because just whatever comes to you is perfect, is fine. And if you can't think of anything, write down, I can't think of anything. Write down whatever the process is that you're in in that moment. This is an exploration of yourself without any judgment. So whatever you do is perfect, is fine, is great. Uh, so I'm going to give you a prompt, which is just a uh, a kind of seed from which to start your writing. And the prompt is that you're gonna write about a powerful experience you've had in nature or a powerful experience you've had with an animal and its effect on you at that time in that experience. A powerful experience you've had in nature or a powerful experience you've had with an animal. Any questions about that? So we're gonna take a, a, a minute or two to get a felt sense of that prompt. So if you wanna close your eyes again, just sit quietly and wait to see what comes up for you. Wait to see what feels right a powerful experience you've had in nature or a powerful experience you've had with an animal. 
you might think of it as the experience choosing you rather than you choosing the experience. And if you find that experience, see how deeply you can step into it, how palpable it becomes. What is the felt sense of it in all its complexity? So gently bring yourself back, still holding on to that experience, the powerful experience you had in nature or with an animal. And we're gonna take eight minutes to write about that experience. And again, when you start writing, just whatever you're writing about is perfect. The eight minutes, I'll tell you when we're halfway and I'll tell you when there's one minute left. So you can start now writing. So you might start to finish up the sentence that you're writing, if there's a sentence there. Okay, and if you could just finish what you're writing and put the pen down, congratulations. Okay, so I wanna give everyone some time to share this experience. Yeah, um, totally. Who would like to start and talk about what it was like, what happened to you during this experience? What was it like to both read your piece and to hear other people reading? I loved doing reading my piece and also listening. Um, one of our members is uh, Chinese Kate, and we had her read hers in Chinese, which is what how she wrote it. So it was a very interesting experience because um, we didn't know what she was actually saying, but we could feel what she was saying. And um, so it, it, it was very connecting. Um, I found that I was so excited to have the permission to just let the words fall on the page. And um, I, I was recalling uh, walking in the, with the giant sequoias not too long ago. And it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was just very, magical, majestic, um, engaging in every level, mind, body, spirit. So um, I was happy to have that opportunity to, to bring it back, to recall it, to revisit it. That's wonderful. What a wonderful way to replenish yourself with your own life. Mm. Yes, <laughs> thank mm. you. Mm. Yeah. Other mm. comments? I felt that, this is Shashi, I felt that 
you know, thoughts are always fleeting. They just, they just pass, they're constantly moving. So putting them on the paper kind of held them that you could revisit, change, add, delete, remember without using your brain. <laughs> that it was, it's really a good thing that we can, that we can write. And some of the feelings became much more clearer in our group, just in the process of writing. That's what I felt, yeah. Great. Um, this is Brigitte bowing in. Uh, regarding the, the language, I mean, I was in a group that nobody was an English native speaker. But I wrote in English because the first two experiences that the exercise brought me uh, happened in America. So I didn't, I didn't think about writing in French. And uh, what, I, what I felt about revisiting, and that was an awesome experience, a divine grace experience. And uh, it reminds me of the uh, uh, invitation of Rickenson that says, um, uh, um, done the expression of this it's uh, revisiting the good uh, just know what is the good and, and taking it back and back again and, and be nourished by that uh, to respect life yeah, yeah? To, to find the sanctity of life yeah that was great thank you oh thank you yeah. other comments mm. Hi, this is uh, this is Steve. First of all, I I would say that it was uh, it was you know really a wonderful kind of experience to be with my um, with my two uh, um, partners uh, Bob and Winston. And there was something that happened in our in a, each of our stories where there were some some um, some connecting uh, connecting links um, in terms of where we were in our lives and at the at the point of the the experience in nature from a from a personal point of view it was um it was uh, uh striking to start off in a in a um in, in a beautiful uh, beautiful haunting uh, experience in lake of the woods on the smooth smooth lake and hearing loons and all of that kind of exquisite um, exquisite ex experience in nature, and then it went, and and then it um, it went. The time period in which that happened linked up with the time period about almost twenty years earlier, which was uh, in fact not connected to nature, but some personal kind of thing. Quite quite scary for the uh, for the eighteen year old person that I was. So it was interesting to, and so there was a thematic connection between the two on a human level and, um, and relational level. And um, it, was, it was powerful to, to take that, you know, to have that experience of, of, the, of the being in nature and then the, um, and it's linked to being, being in relationship with people, so. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting story, and one of the one of the listeners um, described what I'd written as being like in three acts, and <laughs> certainly, um, and they <laughs> they were sort of discordant. So, but it's interesting that one story carries you to another place, and also that each person in that tribe becomes like a sounding board for the others, mm -hmm. and there's a resonance, a harmonic that occurs. That's uh, yeah is a wonderful phenomenon i've noticed that before when you're yeah. when you're writing and sharing with someone else it becomes a, a human community of sharing which is uh quite a wonderful phenomenon Thank yeah, you. anybody want to join a group <laughs> so, yeah other comments about the experience I've... yeah um, it's Rachel. I, I wanted to ask, um, I hope it's all right, it's an, um, but if you, Julian, or anyone on the call could recommend like a place where if they're, I know they're kind of like writing retreats and they're, 
many, many, but to ask somebody who writes and has written for 50 years and writes professionally, are there any that you would recommend or if you could make a recommendation even offline if it's putting you too much on the spot, but sort of the, the importance of community to be able to write, especially about one's own life, you know, is, is so critical and I, I would love to find a place uh, yeah, I could send some on to you, although, you know, it has to be where you feel safe. Because safety is a really important part of this kind of, uh, of writing. Mm -hmm. uh, because not only revealing yourself to yourself, you're revealing yourself to others, and they're holding something that's very precious and very intimate. Mm -hmm. And writing itself is an intimate process where, you know, you're revealing. So um you have to I've, try things out to, to find out where it feels like um it fits with who you are and what kind yeah. of writing you're doing i appreciate that i would just appreciate a starting place other than googling because that feels the most unsafe and so at <laughs> least having it narrowed okay. might, might, might feel safe you to you places. that would be Actually, wonderful thank I would, you i would like i would like it too right mm. i'm uh, I'm I'm thinking that we're going to have a different format in August. Many of uh, the therapist type people will be away in August, and mm -hmm. uh, it would be wonderful to have a writing group that would meet every week, a focusing writing group that would be sort of like a changes group, but um, there would be a prompt and then writing and then sharing. So, idea. put your name in the chat right now if you would be interested in a writing group. Um, for the month of August, uh, or it could be an mm -hmm. on group, a focusing writing group. And um, maybe that can happen. You would have given birth to a, a new thing, Julian, here. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. yeah it, and the Focusing International also has, you know, writing, writing groups. Mm-hmm. Writing. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Other comments on what the experience was like? I know we need to end very shortly. Just interested in what happened to you or what it felt like to be in that group. Yeah, so I wanted to say that my experience, I didn't tell my group this, but my experience started when I was 11 years old. An experience I had when I was 11 years old and then it morphed into the experience of the past year in nature and so to feel the kind of the evolvement of that but also just that there were so many similarities in those feelings from when i was 11 mm -hmm. and in the past year it was really interesting mm -hmm. yeah in the river of experience there are echoes that occur over and over again and sometimes they replenish each other and sometimes they uh expand and evolve and become different deeper and richer and it's wonderful to be cognizant of that mm. to remember that yes i'd like to say that i wrote about something that happened 30 years ago with my dog and it was both terrible and uh, wonderful for me at the same time and i got clearer about that today actually and mm. writing it, why it stays with me the way it does and the group is really helpful in kind of their reactions. So, thank oh. you. yeah. Yeah. Having a different perspective on an experience, going back into the experience, but being able to see it from a different perspective is incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that it was also with the first sense was really interesting. I hope that's okay to say, Stephanie, she really experienced. We spoke, we, we, in our group, there was um, some sharing about grief and, um, you know, stories. And the listener was experiencing the different stage um, of time in the grief process differently in her body. So that's so interesting, you know. First stage was really mm. in the heart and then maybe a later, you know, stage of grief was more in the arms and that that I thought was really also an interesting focusing um, yeah just noticing how I'm the body know. is yeah. experiencing that mm -hmm.
find Sophie? <laughs> well, thank you so very much, Julian. And uh, this is very precious for us. Mm. And to have a closing poem from Dorothy. And uh, we'll see you all next next Monday. Uh, just in closing, I want to say I want to honor each of you for having the courage to do this and to have this experience and to um, and to go deeply enough into it to be able to share it with yourself and with others. And I hope you can continue finding ways to do this kind of process. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And Julian, thank you for sharing yourself. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so thank much, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Julian and Lynn and everybody and my my group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks so much. I think we're ready for Dorothy's poem, Hi. and then we can all say goodbye to oh. each other. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um. Thank you, Julian. It feels wonderful to get back to writing. I want to say that the, the poem today I put in the, um, the very beginning of the chat chat um, it's by Rilke um, and it's called um, um, go go to the limits of your longing God speaks to each of us as he makes us then walks with us silently out of the night. These are the words we dimly hear. You sent out beyond your recall. Go to the limits of your longing. Embody me. Flare up like a flame and make big shadows I can move in. Let everything happen to you, beauty and Tara. Just keep going. No feeling is final. Don't let yourself lose me. Nearby is the country they call life. You will know it by its seriousness. Give me your hand. Mm. Very nice. Yes, a Thank very so fitting poem for today. Okay, bye everybody. See you. See you next time. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you all. Bye, bye Julian. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Yeah.